All right, cool. Hi there, I'm Josh Baker, and today I'm talking about Tile38. Tile38 is an open source geospatial database with automated geofence functionality. This talk will be a, a very brief, high-level introduction to the software and the project. A little about me, I've been working in location-based tech for a long time. I started out by making GPS software for amateur sports. Eventually, I grew tired of the amateur sport industry, and I began a new location-based project in the urban ag agriculture space. It was during that project in 2015 that I had the opportunity to build Tile 38, and it's been my main focus ever since. My original goal with Tile 38 was to just make a really fast spatial index with some basic geospatial operations. I wanted to store GeoJSON geometries in the database and to do queries like point and polygon and nearest neighbors. And I wanted the software to be very easy to use. To make things easy, I chose to base the Tile38 command protocol on Redis. It seems that most database folks have or know of someone in their company who has experience with Redis. The decision also made most Redis client libraries immediately compatible with Tile38. I wanted to make Tile38 standalone and not rely on other software or databases to run. A later thought, it would be nice touch to add automated geofence functionality, which I'll talk about in a moment. Finally, I needed a robust and scalable solution, so I added replication for failover and read-only servers. So here we are with Tile38 today, a little over five years and 969 commits later. Open source is pretty amazing. I went into this project with no expectations. And now it's being re reused by really smart people. They give me feedback and they help me improve the project. The folks using Tile38 work in lots of different industries, but I think the sweet spot has been mobility and transportation. The specific feature being geofencing. In Tile38, there are two kinds of geofences. The first is the static geofence. A static geofence is just a stationary virtual boundary somewhere on the planet and is generally used to detect when a point interacts with it, such as entering or exiting. In the example animation on this slide, there is a yellow dot, which represents a moving vehicle. And there are some red circles, which are geofences. As the vehicle enters the geofence, the circle turns green. And when the vehicles exit the geofence, the circle returns to red. With Tile38, you can configure your geofences to automatically send notifications when an enter and exit event happens. Along with enter and exit, Tile38 can also be set up to detect when a point stays inside or outside of a geofence or crosses over the geofence. The other kind of geofence is the roaming geofence. A roaming geofence is one that is wrapped around a point which is continually moving. So if you're interested in, let's say, when two or more vehicles in a fleet are nearby each other, like perhaps you need to send a driver a rendezvous location when they're a couple kilometers away, or maybe send them some sort of automated message. Roaming geofences allow for stuff like that. All right, so now I'll show you some of the Tile38 commands for creating simple geofences and setting an object's position. The first command, we create a static 200 meter geofence around a specific point. It triggers a notification when an object from the bus's collection interacts with it. The next command, we create a roaming geofence that triggers notifications when two objects are within one kilometer of each other. Finally, we have a very simple set command, which inserts or updates a point. And if that point interacts with the defined geofence, then Tile38 will broadcast a notification. These are what real Tile38 commands look like. They have a very simple, easy to understand structure. So putting it all together, it's possible to make some pretty fun workflows. You just send location data to Tile38 which does all the geofence detection stuff. And when it automatically streams notifications, it'll go wherever you want.
Tile 38 has built-in support for a number of message brokers, event queues, and pub sub systems. The idea is that you can point your geofences to one of the providers on this list, and Tile 38 will manage the sending of the event. While Kafka and Amazon SQS are probably the most prevalent, I know there's a lot of devs, especially in the IoT space, that prefer alternatives like RabbitMQ and MQTT. But if you want, you can just point the notifications to an HTTP webhook. At its core, Tile38 is a fast, custom-built, in-memory database. Under the hood, it uses a variety of data structures like R trees, B trees, and hash tables. It supports GeoJSON and all standard geometry types. It has a built-in Lua scripting engine, and it has a number of general purpose geospatial operations, such as intersects, point and polygon, and nearest neighbors. Thanks to a bunch of open source contributors, Tile38 now has many client libraries and supports most major programming languages. That's all for now. Check out our website for further documentation. You can also get help with Tile38 on GitHub or Slack. If you like the project, please start it on GitHub and follow it on Twitter. Thank you. Really, that's really cool, Josh. Um, really impressive. Um, can you give me some idea how that scales? I mean, what kind of numbers we're talking about? In um, terms of what what part of scaling? Well, how many how many fences, how many roaming fences could you have, for example, going at the same time? Um, sure. Roaming so geofences. Yeah, you can uh, probably pump out about a little over hundred thousand going on at once likely. Wow. On an instance. It really depends on your hardware. So right. it was designed originally, I, I, I made an attempt at using um, some other technologies like MongoDB and, and PostGIS, but a lot of them were pretty heavy. Um, and uh, I ended up figuring, you know, I'll try to kind of get an idea like how Redis manages some of its in-memory components and stuff. And that helped me, that kind of helped guide me around some of the performance side. So the idea with Tile 38 is that you're going to want to, um, in general, you're not going to store like open street maps in it. It's not really for that kind of thing. It's really a geolocation. I wouldn't call it a GIS database. It would, I would call it a geolocation database. And, um, and there are some users like, um, there's, a, there's a like House Canary, for example, out of San Francisco. They, they're like, they do some Zillow based stuff and uh, Zillow kind, kind of like stuff. And they have like 250 million addresses, uh, houses throughout the US and they store all of it in Tile 38 so that they can get the scalability off of just a handful of, off, just like a handful of um, uh, servers. And, um, and so there are some cases where people are using static but mostly it's for, for mobility. I mean, it's for wow. data that is always on the move. And so I, I mean, like if I were to use it for a, a brand new startup, you know, I would probably limit to like, like a region and a, and probably not more than a couple million points at a time. Right, gotcha. Okay. Um, so just let me play this back to you for the less technical people. This is simply focused at the question of is are a pair of coordinates crossing into a static fence or is the center of a mobile fence um, interacting with the center of another mobile fence. Um, and you'd store all of that in some other database and then just feed the um, individual incidents um, to the Tile 38 service. Well, yeah, you I mean, there's a couple options there. I think having a, uh, I mean, Tile 38 can certainly manage if you have two fences, you have one fence here and you have one fence here and one of them is moving. If you want, you can, you can organize. You can always just update your fences and when they interact, they can fire off a notification. Um, I mean, usually you have a fence and you have a point and the point interacts with the fence. That's the general, that's probably the most popular way of doing it. Uh, bus stops are, are a, good, a good example for that and train, and train stops and stuff like that. But 
Uh, as far as the storage of the data, I mean, Tile 38, store, you store all of the data into Tile 38. There's, there's, no, um, there's no external database gotcha. involved there. And so what I don't, I mean, I know there's all sorts of ways to get data from one place to another. I would say, I'm trying to think of the, I can't recall if it was Flixbus or one of them uses Kafka across the board. And so they even, they pump their sensor data into Kafka and then Kafka actually does all of the spinny work and then drives it into tile 38 and tile 38 then does all the geofencing and, and calculations and geo stuff and then dumps it right back into Kafka again. And it's just kind of like the spinning wheel and they're able to get all their regions working in that. So there's some really creative solutions. Okay, so a question- I don't know if that answers the question, here. but- no, you did sort of answer it, um, and I'm just conscious of time for everybody. So probably the last question. Um, Ed asks, how do you afford to work on it? Um, are you paid by donations, or do you work as a consultant to people who want to use and install it, or do you run it for them? This is a side project of mine. Um, I'm semi-retired. I, I, I had a couple businesses back in the 2000s, a golf GPS app. It did very well. Um, and so I sold the business in 2013 to work on to work on um, to work on some of the, my passion projects. And one of those was the I wanted to work on agriculture automation and and specifically urban agriculture in large sprawling valleys like like Phoenix. And in doing so, I saw a lot of areas that were kind of missing in the in high performance like geo automation. So I just felt like this was a a fun project to work on. And so I started on this and I just working on it ever since. Um, it's just it's just like a perpetual side project. Okay, really cool. Uh, Josh, thanks very much. Ed, back to you to 